This summer really is going to be crazy, ladies and gentlemen, as far as Manchester United and transfers go. And Frankie de Jong, is that a conversation any of us thought we'd be having? Maybe, maybe not. But I'll tell you what, there is real substance to this. There is real possibilities that Frankie de Jong leaves Barcelona this summer and joins Manchester United. And let me run through this full story for you in this a full look at all the de Jong reports, what's coming out of Spain, what's coming out of England, and why, as I said, there is a distinct possibility that Barcelona cash in on one of their most valued assets this summer as part of Xavi's rebuild. Let me explain it all to you so you can completely understand it. It's kind of hard to keep on top of all these transfer rumors. That's what I try and do with these full story looks. So make sure you please go down there and subscribe to United People's TV if you are new. You won't regret it. Well, at least I don't think you will. Hit the notification bell as well. But you'll remember, of course, that I did one of these videos back in December. De Jong to Manchester United, a full story. At that point, was that a pipe dream? Maybe that was a pipe dream at that point. But I think the story, I don't think the story, I know the story has definitely developed since then. Let me do a quick recap of everything that's happened in the last 24 hours to bring you bang up to date. It all started with Gerard Romero, who is a journalist considered very reliable as far as Manchester United, as far as, as far as Barcelona news goes. And he said this, he says, before the end of the league and with a 95% probability, Frankie de Jong will be transferred to Manchester United. And it's purely an economic issue. He went further and said Barcelona believed that if Frankie de Jong continues at the club for another season and doesn't explode and sort of show the sort of form he had at Ajax, they risk losing money on him. Now, Rob Dawson from ESPN, he waded in and said, look, it will be a hard one to do. There'll be a long queue. Man City would be in for him. Simon Stone, who gets, I don't think he's basically gets his leaks, not his leaks, but he gets his info from the club saying, look, United do like Frankie de Jong, but so do a lot of other clubs. And then Fabrizio Romano jumped in. He said the Frankie de Jong situation, there has been contact with United. Yes, there has. But sources say there's no full slash close agreement. Barca's financial situation could affect Frankie's future. I think you might be starting to see a pattern here. His priority is Champions League football. Eric Ten Hag will push. Samuel Marsden, who writes for ESPN as well, he says people close to De Jong, even after today's stories, insist that it is still much more likely that he stays. It's the club who probably needs money before June the 30th. We go fast forward here. And Gerard Romero has not only released these stories last night, he's now doubled down on them and gone as far as saying that Frankie De Jong will be Eric Ten Hag's first signing at Manchester United. And he also said that John Murta has been speaking to Barcelona for some time now. So as you can see here, this is not a story that's based off the back of one report. Or maybe it is, you can say that. But this is very much based in the fact that Barcelona are in a real financial crisis right now. Now let me explain this to you because this is what you have to understand. And this for me is proof that Barcelona will sell Frankie de Jong for the right price this summer. As I said, maybe it was a bit of a pipe dream to think that he could have come in in January and look, Randit didn't get any backing, so the club didn't trust him. But the, this idea there that John Murto has been in contact with Barca for months, I like that idea. That's called foresight. That's called thinking ahead. That's called, okay, we're going to get Eric Ten Hagen as our manager. Hmm, what midfielder would he like? It was always going to be Eric. It was always going to be Frankie De Jong top of that list for Eric Ten Hag. But look, fast forward into what ESPN are also saying here. This is Rob Dawson doubling down on what he's saying that it will be an uphill battle for Frankie De Jong. He's saying sources have told ESPN that Ten Hag is not a particular pull for De Jong. I would question that. I think their relationship is very strong and their bond is very strong. Goes one step further and says sources have told ESPN that De Jong's preference is to stay at Barcelona. But if he was told he was surplus to requirements at, at Camp Nou, he would prefer to join a club where he would play Champions League football. Now in that situation, it comes down to whether or not you think Champions League football or reuniting with Eric Ten Hag would be more important for Frankie De Jong. Now you can let me know what you think about that in the comments, but that's a real one. We don't know which is more important at this stage anyway. Let's dive into this even further though. This is from Dermot Corrigan for The Athletic, saying exactly the situation as it is. Barcelona are at a bit of a crossroads with Frankie de Jong. Now this might come as a bit of a surprise to you. It came as a surprise to me when I read it. Look at that. De Jong has only completed 90 minutes in basically a third of the games under Xavi. He's far from this indispensable, irreplaceable player in two-thirds of the games, he's taken off. 
if we go down here and we see this this is this is also an extremely important thing to understand in this whole de Jong situation is the political aspect of it the club hierarchy can see that it, it is politically acceptable to sell de Jong. Cashing in on other players who have a market like Pedri or Gavi or Araujo or Fati would cause uproar. But someone like De Jong would be someone that, because that's where it's different. You know, you get, you get um, elected presidents in Barcelona. They have to favor popular situations. And it's, it's, it's not just a football club. It is more than a football club. It's a bloody political party at the same time and a badly run one like that. But Barcelona, this summer, are going into Xavi's first summer full season as manager and he wants to rebuild this club he wants to rebuild and he's done a very very good job in this season so far but Barcelona are not the all spending powerhouse that they used to be it's a big reason why they were pushing for the European Super League and Xavi has explained that himself this is he was he was questioned here this is before Haaland joined City of course he's and because Barcelona were being linked with the move for him I can't remember I think it was their president said look we can go, we can sign Bar we can sign Haaland this summer and all of us were like really can you this is what Xavi said he said it's very difficult because of the economic situation and we go down to the bottom there if you if what you say happens and Barcelona don't sign Haaland it would have been because of financial issues and if we look into these financial issues here this is official this is the La Liga back in March Barcelona's spending limit was reduced from 97 million to minus 144 million euros. Yes, I said that right. No, that's not a spelling mistake. Minus. In the negative. Now, the thing I don't actually understand at this moment in time is whether or not the, the situation of the Spotify sponsorship, which was actually announced the day after this was announced, interestingly enough. That was announced on the 14th of March there. This was announced on the 15th of March. I don't know whether that actually changes Barcelona's ability to spend but what this rule is, and I'll tell you what, it's damn complicated. And what I'm trying to do is get a proper Spanish journalist on here to speak to me about it because I want to find out more facts about this. I think this is the crucial part of all of it. If Frankie de Jong leaves Barcelona, it's because of these financial situations. And as far as I can see, they've got like a one-quarter rule, which means if Barcelona were to sell a player worth $100 million, they would be allowed to invest $25 million of that into a new signing. It's why that getting the likes of Philip Coutinho off the books going to Villa on a permanent deal, that reduces their wage bill. They need to sell in order to buy. And someone like Frankie de Jong, someone who's got real value, real strong value in the market, 70 to 80 million euros. They paid 86 million. Be roughly what they're going you know. But Frankie de Jong, what do you think? What, what does your gut tell you about this? Because on the one hand, you could say, oh, there's no chance he's going to come Manchester United. Champions League football is what he wants. Well, he's just played Europa League football with Barcelona, so it can't be that bad. And it, it depends on whether or not you think that the pull from Eric Ten Hag is more important than the pull of Champions League football. That's the thing that I can't say with any confidence yet. Uh, because Frankie de Jong, if he had his own way, I don't think he'd leave Barcelona. I think he'd stay there. I believe him and his girlfriend have just bought a new place together. He's happy there. He wants to be part of that rebuild. But financially, because of these restrictions that are getting put on Barcelona, they have to find money from somewhere. They can't just look under the sofa and get 90 million out. They've got to sell somebody. And that's why I think the idea here of him leaving cannot be ruled out. And this is what Reshad Rahman said. He's quite a, a popular uh, Twitter Barcelona fan. This is kind of what he's, his take on the situation is. He said, I feel Barcelona are ones open to selling Frankie de Jong as he's the most valuable and can fetch the club the most money, which is probably why we'll continue to see more rumours pop up. I can definitely see these rumours coming from within the club to have a bidding war or to gauge further interest from clubs. Doubt they're coming from the player's camp who's always been saying that the player wants to stay. And that's, that's something that we've read quite a lot. Xavi has said he's happy with De Jong. De Jong's always said that he's happy at Barcelona. He's not going to push for a move away. But at the same time, it might be out of his hands. And as I said, it's whether or not you think that linking back up with Donny van der Beek, linking back up with Eric Ten Hag is more of a pull for him than Champions League football. That's a debate. And maybe we'll have that debate as well. But when it comes to what De Jong would do to this Manchester United team, I'm going to do a separate video on this for sure. But this, honestly... I'd go as, to far, as far as to say if Manchester United were to sign one player this summer, I would choose Frankie de Jong. Because if you watch Ajax's build-up play, 
They typically, ideally, want to have their fullbacks. And the, we have got Muki here because I was doing a, a little video the other day. Let's go for, back for Delo. Um, we've got Delo there. Let's say they play up. Normally, the, the fullbacks push up. The centre-backs push up. And what happens is one of the midfielders in a 4-2-3-1 will drop into this position here. We'll drop in sort of alongside the third, become like a third centre-back or a deep-line playmaker. And will therefore be tasked with bringing the ball forward, will be tasked with being the playmaker from deep. And De Jong will be first on that list for Eric Ten Hag. If it's not De Jong that we sign, it will be somebody like De Jong. It will be somebody of the profile of De Jong. But as I've just explained in that video there, the full story, look at it. And with these finances, you cannot, you cannot completely rule out the idea that they might be cashing in on Frankie De Jong this summer. As Dermot Corrigan says here, it's time now for Barcelona to decide whether they persist with Frankie de Jong, who's only started, a th who's only completed a third of Xavi's game so far, or they cash in on him. And if it's not him that they sell, they have to get money from somewhere else. It's a really interesting situation. I'll be honest, it's one that I think United can take advantage of here. Frankie de Jong. I thought, as I said, if I, if I rewind a few months to when I did this video here, maybe I was a bit dreamy. Maybe I was, I mean, I was dreaming. That was a pipe dream. But hell, Radnit was a pipe dream, that happened. Ten Hag was a pipe dream, that happened. Matt Judge leaving, that was a pipe dream, that happened. Things are happening positively for Manchester United right now. And who's to say that we couldn't get Frankie de Jong in? I hope I've explained the whole situation. As I said, I'm going to try and get an interview to get some more insight on this. It's a fascinating situation that's really developing. Kind of hard to understand, but I hope you have learned something by watching this video. If you have, please make sure you drop a like on the video. It will help United Peoples TV. And subscribe if you're new. But Frankie de Jong to United... A, do you think it will happen? And B, do you think it will be a good signing? Because I think it would be an incredible signing.